Hope is a feeling of expectation, an earnest desire for a particular thing to happen. It is the basis for believing that something good lays ahead. It is not just enough to know what hope is. It is equally important to know who you hope upon. In 1834, small town pastor, Pastor Edward Mount, wrote one of the most popular Christian hymns. The first two lines are, My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. With these lyrics, he suggested that any other person or thing outside of Jesus is less a thing or person to hope on. We all are aware that some people put their hope in all the wrong things and people who they know, their talents, their robust bank accounts, their beauty and physical outlook, or even the government. This is risky business because, like Pastor Edward would say, all other ground is sinking sand. This man must have had a powerful or divine revelation to come up with such pure truths. The same people are left dejected and miserable when the object of their hope falls off the high pedestal on which they were placed and disappoints them. The founder and sustainer of our hope is Jesus Christ. Jesus and hope is one and the same. When God sent his son to die on the cross for us, that heavy sacrifice became the bedrock for Christianity. The significance of what was done on Calvary gives us the courage, the reason, and the right to hope for better things. It enables us to look ahead at the future with confidence. It boasts to us that it is possible to achieve our heart's desire as long as it is in line with God's ultimate plan for us. The common hope that all believers share is the hope that Jesus will come back again to take his people to glory with him in heaven. Do we know the exact time of his second coming? No. But we know that he will return. And by aligning our steps to the right path and doing what he says, we hope that we will make it back with him. Build hope on the foundation that cannot be shaken. Build it on the surest foundation there is. Build hope on nothing less than the standard. Build hope on something concrete. Build hope on Jesus. There is a wonderful insight on this topic in Romans chapter 15 verse 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in Him. Then you will overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Once more, God is acknowledged as the sole source of hope. This hope is every bit as important as the peace that comes with it. Some people profess their hope in God, but at the same time, they are walking a tight line between normalcy and depression. It is not hope if you are fidgeting and are constantly worried. When you trust God, your mind has to be at rest. You need to go about your daily tasks with your joy intact. This shows a relaxed assurance in the fact that God's help is readily available and although it may not show up immediately in the expected ways, it can never come too late. Now, it is not easy to display this kind of calmness all the time. Recession and inflation and the countless cares of life can attempt to steal the joy and peace that comes with trust in God. But here's the good news. 
God understands. As stated in the above scripture, God is the limitless source of hope. God will fill you completely with the things most necessary for keeping your hope alive. There will be no space for doubt, fear, and what ifs. It is through this joy and peace that your confidence will double, triple, and even overflow. All of this and more is possible, but only through the help and power of the Holy Spirit. All you have to do is ask for divine intervention. C.S. Lewis, one of the greatest authors of his time, explained that, contrary to some opinions, hope is not wishful thinking or a form of escapism from reality. Hope is in fact very observant of the present. Hope sees the despair. It sees desperation. It is fully aware of the present struggles. It knows all about the pain and shame of the moment. It understands frustration and setback. At the same time, hope is more concerned with the future. It does not let whatever is happening around to dampen the bright light shining from the end of the tunnel. It is basically envisioning the desired future into existence. When you hope for something, it is absent at the time. You do not hope for what is already within your reach. Romans chapter 8 verse 24 to 25 says, We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. In other words, the minute Jesus comes into a person's life, hope comes along. That person automatically receives the right to hope and to hope confidently. Hope is frontward looking and forward marching. To look back is to miss a step. To miss a step is to fall out of line. More than anything, the devil wants God's children to lose hope and to lose standing with God. This gives them unlimited access to their lives. Do not give him that leeway. It can only end in destruction. Refuse to break under pressure. Confidence in God is never rewarded with disappointment. Don't grow weary of waiting and attempting to help God. Every promise that God has made to you, He will surely fulfill. Don't forget that He holds times and seasons in His hands. Time is not a limiting factor. No matter what your eyes see, keep on trusting. Keep on believing. Circumstances may make you look stupid for hoping for something so big. This is a reminder that nothing is bigger than the basis of your hope. Nothing surpasses God. Keep your hope alive. Wear it proudly like a badge. And according to the desires of your heart, it will work out for you.